Welcome to episode two of Battlecast, the incredibly semi-popular internet show. Thank you. If you missed episode one, I will have a link to it down below so you can kind of catch up and then continue watching this one. It's going to be a three-part series. I'll have it all set up in a playlist, so don't you worry if you're watching this afterwards then they should all be in a playlist that I'll have linked below as well. So be sure to check those out so you can get the full interview. And of course, as always, before we start the video, if you do enjoy, remember to leave it a nice, thick and juicy like. And, you know, I mean, if you do enjoy this kind of content, I enjoy it myself, you know, a little biased, but, um, you know, you might want to hit that big red sexy subscribe button so you can get more of this kind of content. And then I also got to thank my channel members. You guys help make these videos possible. So thank you guys very much. And uh, if you want to join and get access to the exclusive perks that they get, there's a link in the description down below, or you can click that blue join button. Anyway, let's start. Uh, what is one mind blowing innovation that you would want to see or something that would like on like the reveal trailer, I'd make you go, oh damn, take my money now. Kind of like the behemoths okay. when it blew up or Levolution type of type of deal. <clears throat> okay, yeah, that's what I was about to ask. So you mean like something that we might have seen in previous games? Yeah, uh, yeah something that's just like, damn, yeah. take my money. That, that Levolution, man, gotta have it. Yeah. I, I want to see buildings and towers and stuff fall. I, I want to see total destruction. Not bad company to destruction mind you because <laughs> that was a little too much uh to a degree because mm -hmm. if you played bad company too the destruction was so great uh you would have nowhere to hide uh so i, I really do hope they bring fortifications back that'd be great that would definitely make me go oh damn yes absolutely but yeah levolution 100 I, mm -hmm. I want siege of shanghai again i'm down for that uh, I guess I would I would have to say like an evolution of evolution. Yeah, mm, I, I want twister. like the siege of Shanghai and that sort of thing. <laughs> but what I what I'd like to see something or I guess something that would be like shut up, take my money. I guess would be like uh, imagine uh, a battlefield where uh, in the middle of the game a nuke drops, everyone dies. Now there's new spawns. Now it's a new map. But it's Ooh, that's the same game. That you know would I mean? be awesome. That's, okay, that's interesting. I like that. Why aren't you working at dice? <laughs> they can't handle that fro, man. It has the fro power. You know, Deuce it's actually... Just he just hides his massive brain inside of that fro. It's not actually a fro. <laughs> you know, that's what I figured, man. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> He's like an alien Martian just in disguise <laughs> with big brain power. I've been discovered. <laughs> he's got he's got to kill us now. <laughs> you guys may receive a call in the middle of the night. <laughs> you may get a call in the next few days. It's over. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, this is another controversial one. So are we doing premium or live service for post launch? Premium, premium, premium. And if I hadn't said it again, premium. Okay. I was going to say, uh, standing, wh why would you want to see premium over a live surface model? Just okay. out of curiosity. And Dread, now I remembered what, <laughs> where that came up from. Uh, yeah, so definitely premium, okay? Because originally, with Battlefield 4, Battlefield 1, I didn't feel forced, I, I guess you can say, but I felt like I wanted to buy that premium because then I got rewarded for it in a, in a sense, you know? Uh, whereas with the live service, number one, it was shitty. Uh, it, it proved to everyone right then and there that DICE did not have the tech to keep it up with the live service whatsoever. It was garbage. I mean, you look at the amount of content less, really, that we received. Uh, live service is just not the way to go with, with, with Battlefield whatsoever. I mean, no, absolutely not. I mean, premium was it. I, I had no problem shelling out the extra 40 bucks for premium for Battlefield uh, 4 or 1. I, I felt like I was getting rewarded. I was receiving the content. Whereas in live service, well, like I just said, it was it was lackluster at best, you know? Like a, mm -hmm. a, a few sorry people that decided to buy the game, uh, you know, pre-order it, 
pay the extra 20 bucks for the game, and then what we get? A silver plate in 1911. <laughs> <Deluxe tradition. laughs> Been there. <laughs> yeah. Done that. Yeah. I have the t shirt, okay. gentlemen. You have a t shirt? <laughs> I have the t shirt. Deluxe yeah. edition. Yeah, I got, I got the silver plate in 1911, <laughs> I can tell you. It, really funny, too, that I ran across a player the other night that killed me with the silver plate in 1911. And I think he was a level 60 and barely had maybe 200 hours in the game. And I was like, man, this game's been out for a, a while. So obviously he quit playing it because he couldn't stand it either. Okay. Okay. So premium. Okay. Yeah. Premium. <laughs> okay. All right. All right so deuce. like, I, 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 would, I would say in general premium. Um, reasoning behind that is that they've already proven that what they can do with premium works they have yep. had a chance to do live service but it was their first time so if 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 they wanted to do it one more time i would say kudos maybe try it on the next game though uh this game needs to be supremely solid and people are gonna want to know what they're getting because like yep. we were just talking about that deluxe edition was a freaking debacle like mm -hmm. that was absolutely awful we got virtually really absolutely nothing i mean what were we told like 13 skins or something like that and instead yes. what we yes, got that. was 13 pieces that added up to three skins yeah and, was, exactly. and like that's that to me is an embarrassment like you shouldn't be misleading your customer base that that hardcore where no i, no. I felt like i was getting virtually four times what you actually gave me yeah, what was that original thing they were going to do? The weekly drops or whatever for all, all the people that uh, paid for the game, pre-ordered and all that stuff? Yeah, it was going to be like a weekly airdrop or something. Yeah, yeah stuff, and then like it fell airlift. apart in two, three weeks. Yeah. Delightful stuff. Yeah, it was, it was absolutely garbage. And to tell you the truth, I never got the full set of the Red Devil uh, skin anyway. We'll see. I, I don't know. I was never Xbox got it. got that silver plate. It felt ripped up. Awesome on PlayStation. So I was like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was I was mad. I was like, okay, so I paid twenty bucks for skins that other players are going to be able to earn anyway. And I got a silver plated nineteen eleven. What do you do? I feel that. Actually, I had my silver plated nineteen eleven equipped for like the entire life cycle of BF five until like <laughs> two days ago, oddly enough. And now we're talking about it, and I don't have it equipped, and it feels very awkward. <laughs> I just want to mention that. <laughs> um, okay, so I feel like we've determined uh, what we would like to see. Honestly, I'm still undecided. I used to be on the let's stick with their live service train, but just kind of how guaranteed premium is, it's like you can't really go back on I, I think that's the that. part that sells it for me, guaranteed. Well, yeah. yeah, and after, after BF5, like I said, where there were so many promises made, so many promises made, that all fell through like yeah. in this next particular battlefield people are going to want to know what they're getting yeah. period kind of like the uh, battlefield 5 roadmap they originally had made and then it kept constantly changing mm -hmm. yeah and they were allowed to change it because it was a live service yeah exactly yes. and then when they got called out on the fact oh by the way you said this in the roadmap and they're like oh well that that was an accident that wasn't supposed to be there yeah, that was uh, fake news. Whereas with premium, I paid for what you advertised. And if you don't give it to me, if you don't deliver, you have a much bigger problem on your hands. Yes. You know, that's, that's funny, too, because, uh, Dread, what you're talking about right now, uh, when I first got onto Twitter, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember the guy's name, but he was a dice developer. And actually, I still think he is. And he makes tweets occasionally here and there. Uh he did map development and some other stuff and it was roughly about three months into battlefield five being released and i had made the comment in one of his tweets i said you know as a developer and a game maker the way that the game is turning out now and the way that y'all promised things and did not fulfill those promises and i said it kind of sucks for the consumer because we can't sit there and go well you, you sold us a lemon car, so to speak. But I said, shouldn't you feel some amount of shame 
as the creator. I mean, you created this. It's it's a mess. No one likes it. You got a player base that's disappearing. Don't you feel any shame at all? And he's like, no, absolutely not. He he felt he felt no shame about it. And I think actually a pretty well known baguette of a YouTuber uh, actually. <laughs> said something to me as well about it. Um, and he's like, well, why should he feel any shame at all? I'm like, well, it's his product. You know, as a person that sells a product myself, if I sell you a product and it's not what you wanted and it's a piece of crap, I'm going to feel ashamed about it. I'm going to feel bad about it and try to rectify that situation. Whereas, I did, you know, I didn't see that from any of the developers at all. Mm -hmm. Honestly, took their roadmaps or anything they just kind of said okay i think uh our ship is going to sink i think we screwed the pooch let's just give them what we can and just run with it and hopefully we get enough money out of it that's something i def desperately do not want to happen battlefield 6 because like i said if it, it, battlefield 6 or battlefield whatever it's going to be called if it doesn't hit the mark just right man it, it could be the absolute death of the the franchise completely yeah I agree with that. Um, I think as far as like the shame thing, I, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't part of the chat. So, um, I mean, I do think that that has to do with like pride in your work. Obviously, yeah. I don't know if it was up to the guy interpreted it a different way than what you're intending. But, Maybe uh, there might've been a different interpretation because he, he definitely doesn't speak English. As much. <laughs> right. Um, but still, I mean, it's still like, you know, you want to take pride in your work and make sure it's good. And if it's not good, then yeah, uh, shame isn't necessarily a bad thing per se. It's just like, it should be what makes you want to say, oh, I want to do a much better job next time. Make sure that this is actually like great. Exactly. Uh, for yeah. the players. So. Well, I mean, uh, not so much shame just towards him, but for the, for the rest of the developers, I mean, obviously they had to feel crappy about the product that they put out you know and right. I, I know that's not 100 percent on them anyway i'm sure you know the big conglomerate ea probably had a lot of pool in that, that area <laughs> yeah. yeah they might have had something to do with that i mean we wouldn't know <laughs> like they've never done that before but... <laughs> yeah it would never never yeah. ever ever they're angels that's what ea stands for electronic angels uh, <laughs> Yeah, man. I'm looking forward to it though, uh, regardless of whatever it is that comes out. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. Not that I'm yeah. getting sick of Battlefield Five or anything. It's just I can't wait to see what they got what they got up their sleeves. I want to see yeah. what they're capable of, what tech they've been able to handle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you handle the tech? I totally agree. Um. All right, I guess I guess we'll move on to the next question. What's the biggest right. thing BF6 needs to nail for you? Like like if it doesn't do this right, the game is fucked. Um, I mean, I guess the things that they it can't it can't be any one thing. There's there's not one thing that they need to nail because BF5 was virtually such a disaster that they need to nail everything in order for it to be an actual success at this point. Um, major things would be core things that make Battlefield Battlefield. It needs to have some sandbox. It needs to have good gunplay. Um, movement, like we were talking about. I mean, the things that make Battlefield Battlefield. The, the, the level uh, of details that are put into the maps in order to yeah. make map flow work so that it's not just really pretty to look at, but is also really fun to play. Um, things like that. Um, RSP absolutely needs to be in there. That would be something they need to nail. Uh, because if they try and release a bare bones thing like they did for BF5, there that's gonna that's gonna be a huge detriment to the game automatically. Um, because that ruins so many aspects of the game for a great many of the people that are out there. It ruins it for comp players. It ruins it for people that don't want to have to deal with the general player base. Um, you know that have big groups of people that they can play with and stuff like that some platoons like to have platoon versus platoon that sort of stuff i mean there's that it would it would ruin events you know what i mean like there so like rsp is a is a big time one that needs to be in there 
Um, yeah, just core things that make Battlefield Battlefield. That's that's the best thing I can say about. Yeah, I I agree with dress uh, with dread on that 100. Uh, like like you were just saying, RSP gotta have it. Must be a first thing that comes in the game. You know, because as a guy myself that tries to do some comp stuff and stuff like that, it makes it almost impossible with what we have with Battlefield Five right now. Uh, yeah, they need to put uh, details. Yeah, more details into it. If it comes to the campaign, yeah, absolutely. I mean, campaigns kind of, kind of comes what third <laughs> in most people's yeah. heads when it comes to the game period, anyway. Not yeah, primary. RSP, yeah, not not primary at all. I mean, I haven't. I mean, I played the campaign for Battlefield Five, but it wasn't memorable except for maybe the last Tiger. I actually can't remember if I played the campaign or not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, 100% agree with Dread on literally everything he said. Because I mean, that's that's exactly how. It's got to be Battlefield. Yeah, it's to the be. core, which is why I think it's, they actually need to call it Battlefield. It shouldn't be called Battlefield Six, not Modern Battlefield, not Battlefield World War, whatever they want to call it. They just, just need to call it the all-encompassing name. Battlefield. This like, hey, we get back to our roots. Game. Yeah, and, and like Dread said too, with the gunplay, absolutely, the gunplay has got to be, got to be addicting. similar to Battlefield Five. I would definitely say it would have to be updated. Of course, Go back I would to Battlefield Five's alpha and release. Oh God, yeah. That was oh, the yeah. best gunplay of any game I have ever played in my life. Absolutely, dude. That that's what sold me on Battlefield Five in the first place. I I picked up that beta and I was like, oh my god, this is this is awesome, <laughs> dude. And like yeah. when I first started playing Battlefield Five, I was like, I was recently back from a what I would call a ten year hiatus from playing video games. So I was absolutely awful. Oh and wow! I was still loving the gunfights, even though I lost like. 99% of them. I still loved it. And that's what it was way more like. enjoyable. Yeah. It was rewarding. Even if you lost a gunfight, you're like, you know what? Okay. He got the best of me. Like, right. It actually felt like that guy has more skill than me. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Let's not talk about that other thing. <laughs> I know what's coming. Uh oh. Did <laughs> I last just, one? Did I just allude to something? Oh, no. <laughs> You mean uh, skill-based matchmaking? <laughs> Are you guys concerned? <laughs> Are you guys concerned about potential skill-based matchmaking? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> I, I am concerned about it uh, for, for a couple of different reasons. Uh, I mean, obviously, Battlefield 4, if I remember correctly, had some... It kind of felt like skill-based matchmaking. I remember in the stat systems, like you had a skill uh, point system that it would show you in your stats. Like I, I think I ranked anywhere between like 450 and 470, and I noticed that when I was in those higher skill levels, mm. uh, the lobbies were way, way sweatier and a lot harder to deal with. If my skill point dropped anywhere below that, usually about 390 or so, I was in a lobby where... I wasn't getting constantly murdered and I could actually have some fun and I could actually do some killing on my own. I mean, that's the way I, at least I remember it. Then again, you know, I started playing Battlefield 4 on the Xbox 360. Uh, so mm. <laughs> that's a whole different kind of ouch. Yeah. And there, there okay. were cheaters in the Xbox 360 anyway. They were all over on uh, Black Ops 2 all the time. So. Right. Yeah, it's uh, skill-based matchmaking. I don't know. I I honestly hope, with with all the hope in my heart, they don't implement that into Battlefield. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I think Battlefield should just remain a come as you are kind of thing. Come yeah, as you that's... are, whatever skilled you are or not, and just play the game. <laughs> that's how I feel. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, you know. there's no uh, there's no skill based matchmaking in war. They're like, sorry guys, in order to invade Normandy, you gotta have a two plus KD. Yeah. So like, only Al Capone showed like, up. It doesn't happen, does it? <laughs> <laughs> it went the best of the best. If you're a Navy SEAL, you have to have at least a six KD. Sorry. That's why they call them SEAL oh, yeah. Team Six. 
<laughs> yeah, right, well, so my, my, kill this match, my chunky ass match. would be Mule Team 6, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mule Team for 6. Kill match making for me, I think it, I think it comes down to, to two things. Um, what, what kind of Battlefield player do you want to be? And what kind of Battlefield player are you? Mm. Okay, so, like, most people are unwilling to accept that they are not the greatest FPS players of all time. Um, this is true. Is Very true, true in my case. I'm not the best. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. Yeah, I mean, I'm certainly not. You know what I mean? I, I would love to think that I am. I want to be someday. Is that realistic? Yeah, yeah, that's That's totally personal, you know. Thing. so what i think that they need to implement is two different ways of playing it if you want to be that casual player that accepts that you are just a casual and you don't need any mega competition in order to have fun casual player base gets to play with no skill based matchmaking whatsoever then if you want to be the try hardy i'm the best battlefield player in the world kind of guy you have a ranked mode and then those oh, two Apex. modes can coexist on the same game. I don't think that's a difficult thing to pull off, especially if they actually pull the game right and they'll actually pull back hundreds of thousands, if not millions of players. And they'll have more than enough players to encompass all the different game modes. They won't have to do limited time modes. They won't have to worry about any of that. All they have to do is just make it a good game and then they can do all the different modes they want, casual and ranked, everyone will be happy. I think uh, you, just like touching back on the battle royale thing, I think a huge thing for Warzone players, just from what I know, is like the fact that SBMM is in Warzone and they hate that. I think if Battlefield 6 or Battlefield, whatever they call it, doesn't have that, I think that would be a massive thing that would bring a lot of players to Battlefield. Absolutely. Honest. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if it's anything like uh, now, my my son plays it. I don't play it, but I, I know he plays Apen, mm. and uh, he he loves getting into those ranked games. You know, he loves, absolutely enjoys it because he he can get into the games where he's playing against people that are more in his skill level and stuff like that. Right. But uh, he also said there's a huge con, you know, huge problems with it too because sometimes there will be players that will purposely make themselves look worse in their stats or whatever it is. I think he said he's like, they will mm. purposely play like crap for like three or four rounds so they can get into the better lobbies that don't have this try hard. Yeah. And then they'll just reverse. Wreck shop. Yeah. They're, they're reverse boosting themselves and all that stuff. He said, it's absolutely annoying because he, he's like, you'll see like a level guy and you'll be like, Oh, he's, he's, he's about ranked as I am. And then he'll just murder the entire lobby. <laughs> Good old reverse boosting. Yeah. They do yeah. it just for those stupid Twitch clips. Twitter, whatever, YouTube clips, whatever they do. Oh, oh, you know what? Uh, I want to go back a little bit. So when you said, uh, is there anything that they need to nail in this next game? Otherwise, mm -hmm. I won't play it kind of thing. There mm -hmm. is one. Thing. There is absolutely one vital thing. Uh, Anti-cheat. Yes. Oh, yeah. And it yes. needs to be the most brutal anti-cheat there ever was. I agree. Like, uh, like, yeah, I want totally. I want it to hard patch into my PC and console, whatever. I don't I don't even care. I want it to know who I am on a personal level, so that if I cheat, it can be like you're done and you're not coming back in some other form. Exactly. I agree. Yeah, anti yeah anti-cheat has to be a must. And uh, ooh, zoo kill. <laughs> anti cheat. I'm uh, sorry, I'm zooking the hell out of people right now. Uh, anti cheat, absolutely. And what was the uh, oh, cross play? That's the other beautiful thing that we need. Yes, absolutely. well, if you're gonna do cross play, that would be another thing you gotta have elite anti cheat, otherwise, it's gonna be just pure cancer. Yeah, otherwise, yeah. All, you're, all you're doing is transferring that hate from the PC players into console players. Yeah, yeah, and that will. That will kill me a lot because if I'm playing against a PC player anyway, I already know I'm going to get a lot. Mm. I would say that is not accurate. I play a lot of crossplay on Warzone and they're not as good as you think they are. 
Yeah, no, you well, can definitely you compete can... with them. There's there's some guns, like if you're in a somewhat ranged gunfight and you're not typically a strong aimer, they have a super huge advantage. Um, but for the most part, like in infantry-like maps, uh, it's pretty even, to be honest. I think the difference becomes like when you find a good PC player, they're a lot better than the average like they're like the gap between the good PC player and the okay PC player is much bigger than the gap between the good console player and the okay console player. Yeah. Yeah, because you can only have a limited height of skill, like what you can do on a con just because of the joystick. Like you're never going to be that precise as you would be with a mouse and keyboard. It's just. How do you guys hold your controller? I know that's not like a weird question, but like <laughs> I saw, I like, and it's very hard to answer. But I saw a guy who held it so that, like, if he like, and I know the D pad is different on Xbox, um, so mm. just picture a PlayStation controller. He held it so that his D pad he was using with his index finger, his left index finger. Are you talking about Max Eek? Not, not well. I don't think this was Max Eek that I was seeing. I think it was just some random guy. Um, oh, okay. But like he would use his index finger for that, and then for for triangle and square and circle and X, he would use his other index finger, and then his middle fingers were what he used the triggers for. Yeah, that's claw. I had never seen anyone play like. Yeah, that. that's what I use, man. Dude, I've, I've heard of it. it. I've I never used it. I've never even seen it. I just had heard of it, but it sounds yeah, insane. Yeah, I, I started. Uh, I started about like that's six a months ago. Yeah. Started switching over to start using claw. And uh, it can be great if you have really good thumbs. <laughs> yeah, and I if you if you got the fingers for it, you can definitely do it. I mean, it's it has changed my style of gameplay completely. But then again, I mean, j just speaking out loud, I mean, like uh, my I've seen a difference in my KD score per minute. Uh, my accuracy has gone up quite a few points just by switching over to claw. It is a lot harder to get used to. If you've ever just played with the same remote your whole life the same way, uh, mm -hmm. I know it, no it's, other way. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so crazy because the best way I can explain it is like, imagine yourself playing with a Nintendo remote for 20, 30 years, and then going right into trying to play with an old GameCube. <laughs> That'd be the best way I can Three explain. Different joysticks. <laughs> it. It, it's just so different. Your brain's like this doesn't make sense I'm doing this. I mean, I, it was, it was a big difference uh, for me when I switched over from using my old remote to a like, series two. Uh, I've, I've had to relearn my whole muscle memory and how to, how to play. Cause now I have more fingers to do more things. Yeah. That part, once you get it down though, it's such a huge difference to be honest. Yeah, like but what, yeah, same, same thing with the claw. I mean, once you figure out how to use the claw, dude, you could be deadly. Interesting. Yeah, that's that's a level of skill I don't think I can pick up. The PC stuff, I can do that because your hand is spread out. You're not grasping onto something. Yeah, well, like, yeah. The the new way of holding the controller in my hand is so foreign that I literally I can't even shoot straight when I try it. Yeah, it it takes some time. It takes a lot of time to get used to it, actually. Yeah. Hmm. This dude is straight up sitting in the corner. Okay. <laughs> the katana <laughs> dude? Uh, no, the guy with the Sturmger Bear 1 5. He's just sitting in the corner killing katana everybody. dude just killed me twice. I don't know what the heck is going on. Chicken Boy Jr. is like rage spamming <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> This poor medic, he's been running around hitting revives and just watching us die back and forth. Poor guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's doing his work, though. I'll give him that. So that's going to wrap up Battlecast Episode 2. Be on the lookout for Part 3 as it should be out early next week. And of course, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have made it this far, I really, really do appreciate it, as do the other two. So anyway... I will see you guys in the next video.